when you're when you're seeing patients, for example, you have so many patients in a day, you're done at the end of the day. But in this kind of research-oriented career, you're never done. So, I guess if HIV disappears from the planet, that part of the work of infectious disease specialists will be done, but there'll be other work to do. It's not impossible we'll see the end of an epidemic in my lifetime. Uh, my name is Mike Cohen. Uh, I'm a professor of medicine, microbiology, immunology, and public health at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and I direct the Institute for Global Health and Infectious Diseases. I've always been a researcher, and I've always worked internationally. The kind of research I was doing had to do with the transmission of infectious diseases, especially sexually transmitted diseases. The progress that's been made in HIV disease is really quite remarkable given the short time frame, a 30-year time frame, and we've gone from not understanding what's causing a, a, a disease to knowing so much about the agent and having such um, capacity for proper treatment, for good prevention, and ultimately working towards curing the infection. And after about 10, 12 years of research, we said, this is worth testing. So in 2000, we began to develop this idea. And in 2007, it took a long time to get the resources necess necessary to do the trial. 2007, we, we launched the trial that is enrolling couples where one person was infected and the other person was uninfected. We call these discordant couples. We enrolled these couples, actually nearly 2,000, at 13 sites in nine countries. And again, the question was very straightforward. If we treat HIV in the infected person, do we render them no longer contagious? Or to what degree do we render them not contagious? We had no idea any results. It was all blinded to us. So when the oversight, the oversight board actually said, we have a recommendation, but we can't tell you the recommendation. Only, you'll have to hear the recommendation later. And we had thought the study had failed. We thought the recommendation had something to do with failure. But the same day, we went back to the NIH and learned that the study was a terrific success, that we had proven our hypothesis that antivirals could stop uh, transmission. As soon as we saw the results, um, the, uh, immediately we, we indicated that the drugs would be available to everyone in the study. Now for me personally, it was quite an amazing moment. When you're involved in something for 20 years, as I've been involved in this work, it's, it's kind of like a day at the office, right? I mean, I, every day I would go and work on this study, literally every day, seven days a week for about 20 years. So having a very positive result that people have called a breakthrough, other people have called it a breakthrough, that Michelle Sidibe, um, in charge of UNAIDS, has called it a game changer, as have other leaders of the NIH. <clears throat> that The Economist used this particular study as catalytic for its cover, talking about the end of the AIDS epidemic. It's pretty rewarding, you know, after 20 years of work, pretty exciting. But we're still going to the office every day. This study's ongoing. We're trying to understand all that we have learned and will learn going forward. <clears throat> We're trying to participate in policy issues that relate to this study. It's, it's quite complicated. Um, so I think it's, um, it's obvious from the public reaction this was an important observation um, and we're really proud that we could do the work, but it's ongoing. <laughs>